Some of you guys may know that I'm actually not a huge fan of green, but it is definitely a huge mistake that if we don't give this particular deck a try in this format. And that is Grand Quagamon, because this is something we definitely should cover as it makes it come back with the X Antibody version, where we have Grandis Quagamon. Just before we get started with the video, I got something really cool to share with all of you guys. If you haven't watched our newest Battle of series with Mario, then be sure to check that out as well. In our latest Battle of X Record series, you will get to see me play the Alphamon X Antibody deck, putting it in action, and playing against Mario's Red X Antibody Omnimon deck. Come watch the epic clash of the Royal Knights to find out who comes out on top. Links will be left in the description box down below or the iCard on the top right, right here. Hello Digimon players and fans, welcome back to another Digimon deck profile and in-depth building guide video. Grandis Quagamon is certainly a very hyped deck that is coming into the BT9 format so far. The Grand Quagamon promo makes an epic comeback from BT4, and that was like over a year ago, and man, time sure does fly, doesn't it? We got a bunch of brand new support cards with a Kuomon promo and the X Antibody version that facilitates a lot of suspending, piercing, and Digivolution cost reduction effects, which is what green does best. Of course, we have Grandis Kuagamon that comes with massive power with DP and perfectly combos with our good old Grand Kuagamon with its Digiburst effect for extra security checks and deals loads of damage all in one go. It is no surprise that this is an OTK style deck and we just got the perfect combos to showcase you guys to help you learn and teach you how to play the deck so definitely stick around for that. Now on the other side there are several cons that this deck has and we all mostly know about it by now. The major key elements that Grandis lacks is just like any other green deck usually. It doesn't have enough draw power and surge power. Finding pieces you need to the combo is relatively difficult at times and you could even be bricking every now and then. So this is why my build and my take on this deck really focuses on consistency to minimize those bad situation and pain points from happening. We also got a bunch of spicy tech cards that you guys can include as well and we'll get to talk about that during the deck profile. So speaking of weaknesses and one of the biggest problems and cons, do you guys know what that actually is? Well, if you don't, well, that is because 77% of you guys who are watching right now are not even subscribed to the channel. If you haven't done so yet, what are you waiting for? We got lots more BT9 deck profiles to cover for this format, so you definitely want to click on that subscribe button right now, turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. Also, while you're at it, give this video a like because it just really, really helps. But with that out of the way, let's showcase the deck profile. Okay, Digi8 cards. We got four copies of... Yokomon from BT5. Our bread and butter combo is really to digiburst with our Grand Kuagamon and having this egg giving it extra 2000 DP when it's digibursted is just super crucial letting us to swing over Digimon or survive security checks during the battle and this is really really important and that is what makes this egg really crucial for the whole strategy for the entire deck overall. And like I mentioned in many of my other BT9 deck profiles so far, since we focus a lot on building a strong stack, four eggs for maintaining consistency is really your top priority overall. So that's it for the Yokomon. Now let's talk about our rookies. Let's showcase the very first brand new rookie from BT9. And right here we have Kukuamon X Antibody. First and foremost, it can digivolve for zero on top of a Kukuamon. Just so you guys know, I don't play Kukuamon in this current build. However, it is a very nice because it can get you a bit more cycling going on. So its main effect is really to on play or when digivolving. However, we are mainly on playing this card to search the top three, grabbing ourselves one insectoid or machine in its traits and one X antibody option among them and basically do our search. This is our main rookie searcher of the deck and you want to maximize this card at four, 100% all of the time. Next up, I have four copies of the EX1 Tentamon. Now this is definitely an unusual choice. It mainly serves as an inheritable of when attacking next time when your Digimon would digivolve into an insectoid or ancient insect and its traits, you can reduce the memory by one, really letting you turbo into your top end very, very quickly, both your level fives and your level sixes. 
and we actually do a lot of win attacking combos in this deck, which really combos very nicely with this Tentamon. The other thing to keep in mind that this is also not a once per turn effect. And there are many occasions we can actually proc this effect two times in one single turn since we do unsuspend and swing again and we can resolve this when attacking. The other really key cool thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't necessarily have to be this Digimon within its stack to be Digivolving into the Insectoid. Let's just say if you have another Digimon on the side and it's trying to Digivolve into Insectoid, this effect will also allow that Digimon to reduce its cost by one, which is why Tentomon is really, really good. Speaking of Tentomons, I actually have another three copies of this Tentomon right here from the starter deck for Giga Green. Now, we all know that green is known to be very bricky and it's a lot slower, which is why I want more consistency and I decide to add this Tentomon in. It really is on play. You reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a green Digimon, you get to add it to your hand just so that we're getting some value when we're hard playing this card so we can cycle through and find our pieces a little bit faster. I would say that this Tentomon is kind of unusual as well. Not everyone is a huge fan of it, but this is just my preference and I do want that consistency so that I could get to my combos and see my pieces as soon as possible. Last but not least, you have to play for Terriamons, which basically is your memory blocker. There's so many memory boosts. This is exceptionally really good against Alphamon as well. And having multiple copies of Terramon on your board really helps just stop the entire combos against some certain decks. And that's why Terramon is super crucial and you have to play a four of in this current format, which I would not go any lower. That's it for all of our rookies. Let's talk about our champion level fours. First and foremost, we have the four copper Terramons from the starter deck. This is the blocker one. We mainly play this for its one Digivolve cost, but not only that, it's also an Insectoid, which helps out with the traits and the entire archetype very nicely. And of course, Blocker is always nice to stop the OTK combos from coming in, and you gotta run this at a 4 of as well, and I definitely will not play any less. Next up, we got Weedmon from BT5. This one is an Inheritable. When this card is trashed due to Digibursting, you get to gain a memory back. Like I mentioned earlier with our Yokomon eggs, we do a lot of bread and butter combo with Digibursting with our Grand Kuagamon. And of course, this is 100% another target that we want to be Digibursting to gain our value at the same time while doing so. Not only that, it's also one cost to Digivolve. Really giving it very cheap level 4 Digivolving is really what we want all about with this Weedmon as well. Then to round off for the level 4s, I actually have two Metal Kabuterimons. Now, some of you guys might be wanting to play the Arbormon for the hybrid for game instead. However, for my playtesting, I just find a lot more value with Metal Carbo Terrymon instead. Because first and foremost, it actually does exactly the same thing as Arbormon. You Digivolve on top of a Tamer for the two costs and you can swing for game. But the other thing is it has 6,000 DP, which this one is a little bit higher, so it's better. And not only that, the reason why I play this card is because it has the potential to Digivolve on top of a level four for only one cost. And like I mentioned earlier, cycling and searching is very weak in green. So by substituting this card instead, I actually like to cycle through more and I think it's very, very beneficial to the whole deck overall. That's it for the level fours. Let's talk about level fives. I have four copies of the promo Akuamon. Firstly, you have to play four copies of this card 100%. He is also extremely incredible core to your combo. Your turn, when this Digimon would Digivolve into an Insectoid and its traits, all of your opponent's Digimon gain that when this Digimon becomes suspended, you gain a memory back. We all know that this is an infamous card known for very similar being to Ice Wall. We do a lot of suspending in this deck in our top end combo as well. So by suspending our opponent's Digimon, we actually gain our memory back. Not only that, when they do attack the next turn, they have to pay a memory as well, which is really, really nice. And it really just makes it difficult for our opponent to play around. It slows down their next turn as well. Buying ourselves extra time is just really, really crucial. And not only that, it has a very nice inheritable of giving our top end with Insectoid piercing. And once we put this all together in the combo segment, you guys will get to see why this deck is actually really strong at taking down your opponent's Digimon and dealing damage at the same time. And so yeah, definitely stick around for that as well. Next up, we have the X antibody version of Akuamon. And we got to play another four copies of this card. Since we do go into Akuamons very often, we want to be Digivolving this on top of our Akuamon, turning it into the X antibody for a cost of zero. And then we basically get to synergize and do its when Digivolving combo very, very nicely because we get to suspend one of our opponent's Digimon and also gain the memory back since we played the promo Akuamon. Also, the other neat thing is if you ever are attacking, you can then change your target to a suspended Digimon that you're attacking into your opponent instead. 
Also, your turn when this Digimon would Digivolve into an Insectoid, you can reduce the cost by one and really making your top end super cheap so that you can turbo into it super fast with all the green shenanigans on what green does best is why this Akuamon just also very important that you must have a four of. That's it for all of our level fives and let's talk about our level sixes where of course we have the four copies of Grand Kuagamon, the promo that came out in BT4 Great Legend, making a huge comeback from over a year ago. And that's really, really cool to see this card to be played again because its main it is your Digiburst King. At Digiburst 2, you get a security plus one. And then if you Digiburst multiple cards, Every two you Digiburst, you gain extra security one, which is really, really nice. So then you can do massive checks, do massive damage. However, the main reason why we play this card is so we can finally bridge into our brand new, where we have the four copies of Grandis Kuagamon. Grandis Kuagamon just does a whole lot of things, makes it one of the best top end board for Grand Kuagamon. It first Digivolves for one on top of Grand Kuagamon. However, with the Tentomon that we have showcased earlier in the rookie line, you can be basically digivolving it for free. Not only that, when digivolving, you suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Then if this Digimon is attacking, you can switch the attack target into that Digimon instead. Once again, like I mentioned, we do a lot of when attacking combos and shenanigans, which I will showcase you guys later in a bit. But also during your turn, this Digimon gains extra 4,000 DP. And always being able to be at 16k DP along with the Yokomon at 18, you're swinging into everything and taking out everything in security 100%. Also, at the end of attack, if you have Grand Kuagamon or X Antibody in your Digivolution sources, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon and unsuspend this Digimon as well so that it can make a second attack, which is why this card is extremely powerful and a perfect top end to bring and buff up Grand Kuagamon. That's it for level 6s. Let's talk about Tamers. The only Tamer I play here are the three copies of Mimi. She is our memory tamer, but also if we have a level five or higher green Digimon, we can hatch an egg or push out from the breeding area, allowing us to make the final one swing with a rookie if we do have it. And I do wanna just play three copies and stick to three copies just for the consistency sake. We need her very crucially, either for hybrid for game, or like I mentioned, for the rookie push out to go for game as well. And we just wanna see her as soon as possible because it is part of a core strategy and combos. That's it for tamers, very simple. Let's go into options. Again, very, very simple four green memory boost we have to maximize this at four green has no surge power very little surge power very little draw power overall which is why this card becomes extremely crucial and comes in really handy because you do want to be searching faster and getting your delay memory boost is just very very nice to make even more combos in play so you can turbo your digivolutions way better from there last but not least simple 2x antibodies, like I talked about throughout the entire video so far, we have a lot of when attacking combos we want to be doing with this card. Sometimes I might want to bump it to 3, but we only have enough space to play 2, so I think 2 is just also very nice. Security, gain 1 memory, pseudo hammer spark is always great, but once again, when we get into the combo segment, you guys can see how good this card really is in comboing with all of our when attacking combos. So we got the 50 card main deck completed and talked about. Let's showcase you guys a lot of other card options that you can sort of be teching in and juggling the ratios when you're building this deck because the base build is very standard and very, very just generic consistency, but there's a lot of interesting spice you could be playing. First and foremost, the one card, the cards I want to showcase and talk about are the, is the red package. We've got hero and a delicate plan. Usually you'll be playing two and two of these and adding it in. You're going to have to find your room space in there. And why it's really, really good is first and foremost, Hero gives you even more extra DP, but it really serves as your red source of allowing you to play your ADP. ADP is very, very important against some sort of matchups. You just want to stop their security. Grand Kuaga, Grandest Kuaga being 18k DP potentially is super strong against any security Digimon. There's no way it will be deleted from battle. However, it is vulnerable to options. And if you do combo it with Delicate Plan, you run over everything, which is why this is so good. Now, however, the reason why I didn't play this in my main build is simply because it's just matchup dependent. You give up a lot of your consistency by adding this package in and you slow down the deck even more. So that's the pros and cons you're going to have to weigh in your head when you're actually building and playing this deck. Next, another really cool tamer that you could add is a Davis. Now I see some players that add this and it does really add to the searching consistency, which is really, really nice. Now, however, once again, I don't have a whole lot of room to be adding and Davis is really just there to grab yourself an extra green Digimon and that's it. Afterwards, he's your memory tamer and he doesn't do anything else, which is why I don't include him, but he's always definitely a nice card to have if you want to turbo your searching. 
Next, as we move on to some of our other rookies we could be playing, the first card you guys might be alarmed all about is that why aren't you playing Palmon? This Palmon, this promo Palmon from the BT4 promo pack. You guys might be thinking that this should be 100% a really good card in the deck because it digiburst along with the Grand Kuagamon. Back in the BT4 days, it was really strong because it gives it jamming. Now, however, I do want to talk to you guys about what I've been saying so far about Grandest Kuagamon and how strong he is. He goes up to 18,000 DP first and foremost, and there's nothing in the game that has more than 18,000 DP other than security Digimon with security buffs against yellow. So therefore jamming, you think about it, is really not that necessary. And the other thing is I haven't really been seeing a lot of yellow decks recently. So if you guys really want to have that jamming and you really want to use your Grand Kuagamon and not your Grandest Kuagamon to do your swing combos, it definitely makes sense to play the Palmon. However, I just don't feel like I need it because I haven't been playing against any decks I've ever felt like having the jamming actually helped me. So this is kind of controversial for all of you guys. It really depends on your local scene, what you're playing up against. So that's the Palmon discussion there. Next, another very nice one to add is a Kokuamon, the one Digivolve cost rookie. Gives your level six or higher extra security plus one, which is very worth it. Not to mention right at the beginning when we're talking about our rookies, Kokuamon X antibody can Digivolve on top of this guy for zero. So there are some times you might want to push this guy out so you get even more value, Digivolve for zero, draw an extra card and search as well, which can be very, very nice. So that's one consideration there. Next, we also have a Lalamon. Lalamon is really good to, once again, help again and tag along with the Digiburst capabilities. When you do Digiburst Lalamon, you get to add it back to your hand, meaning you can then cycle through your rookies even faster, which can be very nice and give you extra draws from there and dig, dig deeper into your deck. But I don't feel like I really need that that off. Next, there's another Digimon that's a level four, which is very interesting. We got a Sneemon, Snymon. Not too sure how to pronounce this guy, but... Its main effect is really just to come out from security at the end of battle, and then you on play also get to suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Now, there's some really cool, funny, surprising combos you can do, especially with the Akuamon pro promo. Since your opponent's effect will still gain a memory when one of your opponent's Digimon is suspended, if this ever pops out during the security battle, your opponent will lose the one memory because of Sneemon coming out suspending something. That's actually a really cool surprise, but not only that, is actually a free body to help us set up for the potential OTK. Grandest Kuagumon and Grand Kuagumon is great at taking down Digimon and security at the same time. But the major weakness of this deck is that it's not being able to finish the game. You really need to finish that game as quickly as you can. And if you don't finish that game, your opponent can have one big turn and turn everything around against you, which is why Sneemon can come in handy sometimes. You guys can play two to four copies of this card if you want to take away your level fours and play around it. And then this guy can pop out and basically is like your pseudo hybrid for game or extra swing to go for the game. That's it for all the other Digimons that I want to talk about. We do have a couple of defensive options. You guys can see our option lineup. We don't have any defenses. This is just straight fire, straight gas, grandest Kuagamon. We want to swing in massive damage, swing into their Digimon as much as we can. We do first off have Electroshocker, which is also from Star Deck 4. Giga Green. This one basically returns one of your opponents to suspend a Digimon back to their hand. Kind of like a very cheap green version of Kokaida's Breath, but it does require them to be suspended, which is not too bad at all. And then you can basically counter back afterwards. Really nice when you do hit this in security against one of their big stacks, and then it's all over for them. They got to rebuild. The other one is Ground Fang. You return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon and one of their suspended Tamers to the bottom of their deck. Instead, this is actually even a better version of Electro Shocker. Oftenly, and most ideally, optimally, in this current meta, we do get to take out one of their suspended top end Digimon, sending it back to the bottom of the deck along with a Cool Boy or Tamer, which is very, very nice. Bottom decking is just one of the best removals, once again, because they got to cycle all the way back. Or essentially that card is gone for the rest of the game because it's not in trash, they can't access it anymore. And yeah, that is why Ground Fang is such a good card. And these two options are pretty nice for considerable defensive capabilities if you guys need any. Okay, so now that we got all the cards covered, let's finally move into everyone's favorite segment of every video that I make where we got the combos. So most ideally, early stages of the game, you want to be playing your Kokua Mons to search, playing your Tento Mons to search, play your green memory boost to search and then have your Mimi ready as well when you can. So that's really what you want to be doing, having on your board. So while you're doing that, as you're building your stack, you would hatch your egg, which of course will always be your Yokomon and you want to start growing. Ideally, you want to be digivolving your Tentomon on top 
and then you can digivolve into your Weedmon for one, and then finishing with a Akuamon in your Raising. So for the first part of this level 5 combo, it's a very basic, quick, and easy combo. Let's talk about this Akuamon and the X Antibody combo together. All you need is really one memory. We, let's just say we don't have our Mimi and our green memory boost and whatnot. These Wookiees can be here or they cannot. It doesn't really matter in particular. But really most importantly is we want our opponents to have a Digimon on their side of the board. Whether it's most likely their rookie or whatever is fooling there. You push up this Akuamon and then you would slide in your X Antibody underneath it. You swing into security with Akuamon. However, you use the X Antibody of when attacking to Digivolve the Akuamon for free into Akuamon X. Now, Akuamon X will suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. And also, because you suspended one of your opponent's Digimon, you can redirect the attack to them. Also, not only that, Akuamon's effect is that because it was Digivolving, it also then gains that ice wall effect until your opponent's end of next turn. So meaning that you suspend your opponent's Digimon, you get your one memory back right here, and then you swung into their Digimon. So that'll be it for our very first simple level 5 combo. And of course, ideally, we always want to be going into our level 6 combo, which I've been hyping out throughout the entire video. So of course, you're going to be needing your Grand Kuagamon and your Grandis for this particular combo. And there's two ways to go about this combo, but let's talk about the first part. This combo in particular doesn't require your opponent to have any Digimon on their side of the board. It's a simple OTK combo that we just want to be doing. Let's just say you do have the Akuamon here promo, you push it up, and then first off, you Digivolve for zero into the X antibody, and then you get to draw your card and cycle a bit more. So what you want to do next is you pay two to Digivolve into your Grand Kuagamon. Now keep in mind, your opponent does not have a Digimon on their side of the board, so you don't really get to resolve your Akuamon from the Akuamon X antibody from earlier. Now because you pay two, you get to then here, what you want to do is the Digibursting. So of course, you always want to be Digibursting your Digiburst targets, where you have your Weedmon and your Yokomon. Weedmon will give you a memory back. Yokomon will give it extra 2,000 BP. Now, because why it's really important to notify that your opponent does not have a Digimon in this particular combo is because when you need to decide to Digiburst next, you ideally want to be Digibursting four cards. So you give it extra two security checks. So of course, no brainer, it will be this Akuamon X antibody for sure. And then since at this moment, your opponent don't have a Digimon, you don't need to have the piercing to be inheritable. So you can burst these two cards away so that your Grand Kuagamon has security plus two, meaning it does three checks. Next up, what you want to do is Digivolve your Grand Kuagamon into Grandest Kuagamon for the cost of one. So then your Grandest Kuagamon could suspend something, but once again, your opponent will have no Digimon, but your Grandest Kuagamon is currently at 16,000 DP because of its own effect. And because you Digiburst your Yokomon earlier, it has extra 2,000 DP, making it 18 for this turn. You swing into your opponent's security, checking three checks, and then it will they basically survive any battle. Hopefully you don't run into any other options. And then because at the end of attack, you do have a Grand Kuagamon underneath, you get to unsuspend him and then swing again for another three checks. That's six checks in total. And then you can even finish the game with one of your rookies on the board here. Now, in a different case scenario, you can even further optimize this combo even better if you have the X antibody option. What you want to be doing is you first want to have your Grand Kuagamon doing its Digiburst thing once again. So you'll be back at two memory at this moment. Next, you slide in the X antibody option. Now you can attack into your opponent's security with Grand Kuagamon. Now you want to use the X antibody option so that you can Digivolve it into your Grandis. Now, Grandis usually costs one to Digivolve on top of Grand Kuagomon. However, because you have the Tentomon, when attacking, the next time one of your Digimon Digivolves into a card with Insectoid, reduce the memory cost of that Digivolution by one. Meaning, you Digivolve into Grandis Kuagomon for free. So once again, you do your three checks, and at the end of attack, it gets to unsuspend. And then you swing in for another three checks. Now, why is that one extra memory really, really important? Let's just say you don't have any of these rookies right here. What you then can be instead of doing is you can go for your hybrid for game for the two memory and finish off right here. So that gives you a little bit of versatility, which is why this combo is really, really cool. Now for the other version of this combo, it's just very similar to that other combo, which I showcased earlier. 
However, this time it's more specific and you want your opponent to have Digimon on their board and you want to clear their Digimon and deal damage at the same time. So once again, you have your Akuamon promo ready to come up. You come up with it and then you Digivolve it into a Akuamon X Antibody for free. Now, because you Digivolved Akuamon X Antibody, you get to suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. And because of comboing with the Akuamon, you suspended something, you gain a memory from that. So here, Akuamon X Antibody goes here on top. And then what's next? is you want to go into your Grand Kuagamon. Grand Kuagamon for two costs only because of once again, Akuamon your turn, you reduce the cost by one. And this at this point is when you want to be thinking of what you want to be digibursting. Of course, once again, you're always going to be digibursting your Yokomon and your Weedmon or level four, whichever you have. And then with Weedmon, you gain a memory back. Yokomon gives you extra 2000 DP. Now this time we specifically said our opponent has Digimon, which means we want piercing to be happening. So of course, no brainer, we'll be digibursting this Akuamon, and this time we'll be digibursting the Tentomon away instead. Or your level 3. At this point, your Grand Kuagamon is set up to swing over stuff with piercing. So of course, you go into your Grandest for the cost of 1, right here. Now when digivolving, if your opponent has another Digimon on board, you can suspend another one of their Digimon. And because keep in mind that this Akuamon is still live, you gain that memory back as well. So you suspended two things at this moment in time. Now, of course, situations might change a little bit if you have the X antibody option. However, it doesn't really matter too much for showcasing at this point at the moment. If you have it, you can do it while attacking. Fantastic. If not, this still works the way it is. What you want to do next is you want to swing over one of their Digimon. Once again, Grandest Kuagumon is at 16 plus 2k with the Yoko, which we earlier, so he's at 18k once again. Swing over your opponent's Digimon with piercing and three checks. At the end of attack, because you do have Grand Kuagumon or X Antibody, you get to unsuspend here. And then you swing at their other Digimon, once again, clearing out that other one and then taking out the rest of their security. So then you can finish off with a rookie right here, or once again, hybrid for game, where you have plenty of memory to do so. That will conclude for my very own deck building strategy and in-depth guide for the grandest Kuagamon deck profile. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a like. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, or questions, be sure to share it with everyone in the comments down below. Overall, grandest Kuagamon is a very strong and powerful deck. It does require you to have all the combo pieces aligned to get there though. I think it is actually best at reacting. Once your opponent has committed to their plays with their combos and their stack, this is when Grandest Kuagumon really shines to come in and swing over their Digimon, stopping them and take them down with the OTK right at the same time. So that wraps up for the video and the guide for today. Once again, we got lots more deck profiles coming up, so be sure to hit that subscribe button right now, turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. Once again, if you guys haven't checked out our latest Battle of Series, then definitely be sure to watch that right now, and we'll see you guys over there. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. It is about signing out.